Hey, what's going on all? This is uh, Kieran Tross. I want to welcome back all the Cloud Scholars. And if this is your first time watching the video, please uh, smash that like and subscribe button. Uh, we are doing a Privileged Identity Management Deep Dive uh, in this series. Uh, to this video today is going to focus on role settings. So um, within Microsoft Azure, there are role settings. Uh, what they do is define role assignment properties. Uh, so what you can do with those settings and you'll see throughout the video is you can have multi-fact authentication, approval requirements, uh, assignment maximum um, duration, notification settings, so on and so forth. But like any other resource or I should say service within Azure, you have to have certain rights in order to be able to fulfill uh, you the request successfully. Now, in order for you to go in and make changes to PIM role settings, you need to be a global admin or privileged role administrator to successfully be able to modify these role settings. So what we're gonna focus on today is I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna jump between these two tabs. And what I'm doing is I'm gonna show you how role settings can be scoped out within Azure. So you can have role settings for uh, one resource group, or you could do it for a subscription, and you can have different role settings uh, for another one. Uh, one thing I want to let you know is role settings are defined per role and um, it will make a little bit more sense as we go through this video. So go in, I'm in the Azure portal. I'm not going through Microsoft Entra. Um, you can if you want to, but I'm in the Azure portal. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go uh, prove identity management, get through there. Um, at this point, I'm pretty sure you all know how to get there. And I'm going to go to Azure resources. Down here, I'm going to go and scope it out. So I'm going to go to my subscription and over here I'm going to look for RG East US and I'm going to click manage resource. While that loads up, I'm going to come over here and I'm going to do the exact same thing as a resource <clears throat> and I'm going to go over to uh, subscription and but this one I'm going to go to a different resource group. I'm going to go to the West Coast, West Side. So um, and then I'm going to manage resource over there. And I want to really show you exactly how these role settings can really be different. Um, and every organization is uh, different. You might want to blanket it through everything in your organization from a management group perspective. You might want to, it depends if you have multiple re subscriptions, uh, you would do it that way. If you want to do something a little different, you know, you might have staff in one area and staff in another location that you're like, okay, you know, we don't need to be as restrictive with this subscription because it's our you know dev subscription i don't know um so the role that we're going to pick on today is the logic app contributor role so right now we're in the rg west us so if i were to click on this role you can see my activation uh maximum duration is four hours and 30 minutes on activation require um and this is going to say like require multi-factor authentication I'll, I'll tell you what let me go to edit and this way we can read it much easier and right here, remember, we're in the West US, so uh, resource group. So activation maximum duration, this is four and a half hours. We have one activation require MFA, and we have none. And down here, we have required justification on activation. And then if I go down to next, I have this on allow, allow, permanent assignment. So this one isn't as restrictive. And if I go next to notification, I have approver is off. So for send notification when members are assigned as eligible to this role. And then we have role assignment alert, which is this is the admin gets the alert. Then we have notification to the assigned user, the assignee. This is the person who's going to get assigned. We have a notification goes to them. Um, and then we have requests to approve a role assignment renewal. So this will be approver would get this notification. And you also have this area for additional recipients. So you can add additional emails here. You make sure that you uh, separate by semicolon. And then you can say critical emails only. So we click on this, it says a mode where PIM only sends out emails requiring an immediate action. So this would be that if you wanted to check that off, you could. Down here, we have more settings. So this is send notification when members are assigned as active to this role. So this is saying, okay, this is a role assignment alert to admin, notification to assigned user, and it's gonna continue with the same thing and then request approval. So what we're doing with these, even down here, send notification when eligible, right? So this is active and eligible. Remember, that's that's how PIM works. Uh, those are the two settings. 
um, what we're doing is we're going to make sure admin and assignee are for all three sections are checked off, but we're going to leave approver off for all of them. And then we'll just make sure we click on update and we're fine. We didn't make any modifications there. But now if I go to RG East US and I go down to settings, and let's make sure we're in the right one. So this was logic app contributor. So over here, we have a logic app contributor. So if I click on the logic at contributor, I see right here, there it's different, six hours and 30 minutes. The other one was four hours and 30 minutes. So let me pull back a little bit. RG West US, four hours and 30 minutes. Over here, RG East US is six hours and 30 minutes. So if I go through this, you can see right here, we have six and a half hours, but on activation, I have Azure MFA. So that option is there. Uh, for Microsoft Entra conditional access context, you can do that as well. So you can do a conditional access with this and then you can choose the context. So Microsoft access, the authentication context is basically like a label that you associate with. Uh, you can associate with a conditional access policy. You can associate it with a uh, uh, document in SharePoint. And what you're doing is with that condition, with that, with that label, you're now saying, okay, it need, you need to have some type of um, meet some type of requirements, whether it's conditional access, in order for you to be able to view or able to bypass. So that's what uh, authentication context essentially is. And I have a video on authentication context if you want to just get a better understanding of it. But this is this is not for this video, so I'm just going to kind of just drive by that um, specific one. So then over here we have required justification on activation. Uh, down here we have required ticket information on activation. So this is only for so this ticket information one. Honestly, this is really um, just for information purposes, right? So it, you know, your uh, this option is only information only field, so it doesn't have any correlation with any ticketing system. So if you have a ticketing system in your organization, it's not like you have the ticketing system uploaded. You have to put that information in. So we can check this off because we're going to be more restrictive on the East US re region, um, and then we can require approval for activate, right? So I can say select approval. So I can now say, okay, who are the approvers, right? So I can just throw my name in there if I wanted to. And I have my different accounts. And I'll just say yes. And then over here, um, I'm never doing allow permanent activation. So I can change this to three months. And I can say this for, you know, one month over here. Require multi-fact authentication on active assignment. I can do that as well. I'll leave that open. And then over here, you remember we had it off for the west uh, west coast location um so uh we're gonna keep everything on we're not like the west side right so we're gonna make sure everything is uh checked off and then um we can just hit update and that would be different so we have a different setting um based on the resource group um, and that's pretty much how you would set up um, your role setting. So you can do it from a subscription level if you wanted to. You could do it from a resource group level. Um, so you can do it that way so that this way you can really have it um, phased out. What I like to do is I have a little about a different approach to how I would go about Im uh, implementing this privilege identity management. So one thing I would do is, you know, I would I would definitely um, I don't think I would do it in a way as a subscription, but every organization is different. Uh, when Microsoft gives you the ability to customize it, um, I would like to blanket it, um, just make it a little bit more simpler. Um, anything contributors would always have like four hour activation or three hour activation. Our readers would have like a six hour activation, so on and so forth. So this way you have a template designed to follow within your organization. So. Um, that's just my quick two cents in there. Uh, please, you know, leave in the comment section, you know, if you're rolling out PIM, you know, what are your, what's your approach? You know, what are you seeing? You know, what areas within PIM are you having a little bit of un misunderstanding that you, you know, you would need me to expound on or even the whole community. If anybody sees any of the comments, you know, please jo join in the conversation. I really appreciate that. Um, if you're having any problems with it at all. Uh, so once again, my name is Kieran Tross. Uh, please smash that like and subscribe button here at Cloud Scholars. My goal is to get you from scholar to consultant and of course, consultant to expert. Thank you and see you next time.